Do you want to make money out of all the historic touristy spots near you? and potentially while you're there, get VIP access to all the kind of behind the scenes stuff that most people don't get to see. Let's get into it. If you haven't come across this channel before, it's all about people who don't do the nine to five. It's also following myself and my wife, Alicia, starting a homestead and as part of that, we can't just have one income source. It's got to kind of come from all different places and it's got to basically be flexible. So first of all, why would you want to do this? For me, it's two main reasons. Firstly, it's to make money out of stuff that's near you. And the second major point is if you're interested in that place, that location, that subject matter, the history surrounding it, then it's a potential way for you to be able to get access to stuff that the standard ticket holder doesn't. So to give you an example of this, the place that we lived before we moved to Wales in Gainsborough, I went to Gainsborough Old Hall. It's a beautiful kind of National Heritage Tudor um, house. And basically I offered for free um, the chance to go and film their Christmas fair. And in doing so, I got multiple tours around the building. I got to go there when not many other people were there. So I kind of got like my own private tour, access to areas that other people didn't. I filmed the craft fair for them, the Christmas craft fair, made a little video. And out of that, I gained a whole load of stuff for my portfolio, as well as stuff for the stock footage sites that I've been selling. And again, has since then made me a bit of money. So if you're a big history buff and you know, you get excited about going to these places and learning the kind of like the living history of it, then it's, why would you not? The legality of doing that. I have spoke to loads of different photographers and filmmakers. It seems everyone has a different kind of view on this of if you are able to just rock up and take a picture of any building you want to take a picture of, especially like public buildings, and then sell that image. Now, please don't quote me on this. I'm not a policeman or anything like that, so I don't know for definite if this is the right answer. This is what I got from askthe.police. It is not illegal to take photographs or video footage in public places unless it is for criminal or terrorist purposes. There will be places where you have access as a member of the public, but will have to ask permission or may be prevented altogether. These could include stately homes, museums, churches, shopping malls, railway stations and council or government buildings. You need to check the situation out on a case by case basis. That's pretty straightforward to me. And that is exactly how I have generally dealt with it. Always try and get permission if you are gonna try and film at a place. Now, obviously that's not always easy. And then it kind of just comes down to common sense. If you're so close to someone that you're taking a photo of them because it's a busy place and you're taking photo of a crowd, maybe you shouldn't be doing it. If you have to scale a fence or do something that you shouldn't, you know, to be in a place where you shouldn't really be, probably shouldn't be doing it. And it kind of also comes on to what I'm gonna go on to how to make money out of it, is that there's a plus side to basically just asking someone if it's a more well-known touristy building, they'll probably have some kind of marketing team and people that you can ask. Now, often they might then say, oh, you've got to pay for that. And that's why sometimes bigger locations maybe aren't perfect for this specific idea. It might be the, slightly smaller locations that they, they might not have a big marketing team. It might just be one person that's in charge of basically marketing and therefore you'll get through in an email or a phone call or, or even just literally going there and knocking on a door. So the ways of making money out of this footage. Firstly, you could sell any of this photography or video footage on a stock site. Secondly, you could try and sell it yourself through either your own website it could be that you sell actual prints. So that can be done on things like Etsy, on eBay. Um, to give you another example, I myself, I was in Banks Mill Studios in Derby uh, and they did like a Christmas fair. And as part of that, I sold prints. Or some bigger buildings may be interested in buying the imagery off you because they themselves may sell things like calendars. And therefore, some places they might then have a bit of a budget for that. Or if you wanted to do it, you could offer them those photography and then kind of in return, they shout about you. They put a post out and tag you in or something like that. So again, if they're a bigger and more well-known place, the sheer fact that they're kind of shouting about you and putting it out on to all their followers might then help yourself. 
like I mentioned, if you're asking permission anyway, and you're getting it in with someone, then you're basically getting in with the person who might have some purse strings to be able to give you some money. If it's a not very well-known place, or if the marketing team's not brilliant, most of the time they might not have a budget for it, or they may not have thought, oh, it'd, really be, it'd be really good to get some photographs of that area, or some uh, video of that bit, whether that be drone footage or clips or whatever. And just the sheer fact that you're offering this might open up this idea of, oh wow, it'd be really good to have you back at this event or to film this thing that's happening. And often, for me in the past, that's how a working relationship has started. When I first started this business, it started by basically approaching people in that way, offering stuff for free, whether it be for myself to just get portfolio work or um, to basically kind of get an in. And then through that relationship, the next time they pay and then the next time they pay a bit more and then it just and then they tell their other locations or people that they know or maybe they move job and they take you with them i mean there's, there's just loads of different ways in which you know that can then branch out and it can become multiple different jobs and lastly you could just use it purely as a way to creatively just challenge yourself and build your own portfolio so it might be that you're trying to do something a bit different, you know, hyperlapses or abstracts, or you wanna do something that again is just that bit different. And you use this as a way to have complete creative control. So it's not that they themselves have said, oh, we've got an event, we need you to document this event. You know, it's a very specific brief. Whereas if you approach them and you're like, oh, I, really, I want to do an art piece and, and this backdrop would be perfect for that, it's a perfect opportunity for you to just practice and get some amazing footage at an amazing location that often, if you weren't then offering your footage for free, you potentially have to pay for. Something else that may work for the specific buildings is if you followed like construction happening. So it became almost like date specific so maybe you went back in multiple times between them getting some renovations done or actually a new building being built and again that might be relevant for someone who's making a documentary out of the building in a future date so it gets sold on stock sites or it may be very very relevant because you've basically helped tell that story for the place specifically and again i know as someone who has often been brought in right at the end of a project and they said, oh, can you try and tell the story of this renovation or of this um, building being built? And obviously you're like, well, not really when I've only got one day <laughs> to film and that's the end. So you are just anything, any footage whatsoever that you can get that tells that story, amazing. And there you are. Doesn't might not have to be brilliant quality. It might could be photos, videos, whatever you can capture. It could be shot on a phone, you know, it doesn't really matter because in that context, it's about the information that that footage tells rather than you know the quality of the footage itself. And I think it comes back to if you are interested in it, then why would you not? You may be on a holiday, you may be just out for a day, and you, you might take photos like this anyway. You might take videos of different things that are happening. You may be the only person there capturing a moment that is vital. So the fact again that it's on a phone or maybe you, you know you're not a, film, a professional filmmaker or photographer doesn't matter. You've captured something that no one else has. And if you can make an extra couple of quid out of it, why not? It may pay for that holiday trip that you went on that day out. So yeah, it's a win-win. <laughs> okay guys, thanks for watching this video. Um, if you like this topic, it's something that's quite kind of new to myself. I don't necessarily aim this channel to be about kind of filmmaking specifically, but at the same time, because of myself and Alicia having to have lots of different income streams, I feel like it's still quite relevant. Plus, at the end of the day, I've got over a decade's experience as a filmmaker, so I could talk all day about filmmaking. <laughs> so if you're interested in this or there's anything specific, especially about either filmmaking, photography, or earning money out of it, and you'd like me to make more videos, please let us know in the comments below. As always, share, like, subscribe, all of that stuff, because we're a brand new channel, so it is amazingly helpful um, at this stage. Otherwise, you know, we're going with, you know, 10 views and eight of which are my mum, <laughs> if it doesn't get shared. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.